That to me, that's the power. He is the power, really. So that's why I say to me, he really was and is the greatest of all. The Christ, yes, but specifically Jesus the Christ. Imagine, uh, I often think of this, um, one so great, knowing that he was the very presence of God himself. And when the disciples washed his feet, he insisted on washing their feet too. And had John baptized him, look at the humility, look at the love. He refused to place himself above them. That's love. Humility is love. Love is humility. Mrs. Eddy? Oh, yes, I, I, I don't like to take uh, too much liberty in speaking of Mrs. Eddy because the, uh, the Christian scientist uh, was a very, had, was still very protective about Mrs. Eddy. I have a tremendous uh, love and respect for Mary Baker Eddy because she, uh, to me, the most remarkable thing for a woman to uh, grow up in her day, women were not even supposed to um, open their mouths, you know. And all they were supposed to do, uh, uh, even for a living, supposedly, uh, was to uh, uh, all be a seamstress or a school teacher, somebody like that, and raised in the strict orthodoxy as she was. And then she had this very uh, sudden, see the Bible, uh, she said that she read in the Bible, she had this very sudden so-called healing, and she didn't let it go at that. She loved enough and was unselfish enough that she continued to search and to seek and to investigate, and she uh, uh, gave uh, of herself, uh, and she was persecuted. But uh, for, for a woman to have the courage, a frail little woman to have the courage, to, uh, to do all the things that she did and to face what she faced. I think it's, I, 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 well, I'll just say my hat's off to her. That's all. Uh, I, I feel that way. Uh, and I also feel that if Mrs. Eddy had uh, not, I, I think she must have been influenced. Now, I don't know this, to be clear. But she must have been influenced, but I think if she had not founded the church. She had not founded the church at all. She just left everyone completely free. It, it might have been better for her, you know. But I'm no ingrate. I, I, am, I, I Christian science was one step along my path, and it was a very important step. I owed a great deal to Christian science. And matter of fact, I owed, the, uh, seemed to me, the life of my daughter to Christian science. Why wouldn't I love it and respect it? And as far even as the organization is concerned, uh, I think it's the finest organization there is in the world. But I want no part of it for myself. I don't want no part of any organization for myself. Because in organization there is bondage, you see. Uh, I do feel that they're doing more good than any organization in the world. To it. But that's how I honestly feel about this in France. I wouldn't, uh, uh, no, nothing. I, I, I left the church because I had to be free. I couldn't stay in the church and be honest and read anything I wanted to, you know. And, uh, unless, uh, and I, so, I made no bones of the fact that I read anything I wanted to read, said anything I wanted to say. And uh, there was a great deal of criticism about that, but that's all right. I, uh, but then finally I realized that in order to satisfy my own consciousness, a conscience, I just had to, to leave the church. But I have no, no quarrel with the church, not at all. And I, I do, uh, I do respect and honor and really love Mrs. Eddy for what she is, you know. Now, well, I guess that's it. Good evening.
You know, <coughs> I was thinking a little while ago, always at the last session, there is a, a tendency, you know, to feel a sense of sadness that it's coming to a close. But uh, actually, from what we now know, we know that it doesn't come to a close. This never comes to a close. Uh, particularly uh, those who uh, attended our uh, what we call class last year discovered that it goes on and on and on and on and on. And there is another point. Uh, I'm going to miss seeing you uh, before me as the last that you are. As a confession number one. <laughs> really and truly. Uh, it's been uh, I would say it's been the most glorious experience of this kind that I have experienced. I, I have seen, I have seen uh, as the room uh, as the, well, a blaze of light more constantly than in other, any other experience of this kind that I've ever had. Now, I recognize very clearly that it is the consciousness that you are that brought this about. And I'm very grateful, very grateful. We've had a wonderful experience, and you know, we do not talk. How can we talk when we are aware of being the one indivisible consciousness? So, you will never leave me, I will never leave you. Wherever you are, I am. Wherever I am, you are. So let's be glad and uh, know that this is only the beginning. <laughs> well, uh, some of our work for tonight is going to be um, a brief resume of the uh, the salient point of our activity in this. Now we've talked a great deal about substance, we've talked a great deal about activity, we've talked a great deal about the body. Uh, the reason for this is that it does seem that the um, that the body is the thing that gives us the most trouble. It does seem that the body is the most difficult thing to, um, to, to really perceive as it is. And of course, uh, as it says in the Bible, the death is the last enemy to be uh, overcome. But of course, that which is, is supposed to die is the body. And uh, uh, we know now that the body doesn't necessarily have to die. And we, best of all, we know why. We know why uh, from, uh, uh, from the standpoint of revelation and even from the standpoint of science. Now we know why. The body does not have to die. So we'll go on from here and uh, see uh, how, um, how much we uh, can be and will be the manifestation of the truths that have been revealed here. However, I do want to say this that you will find in your daily life, in your daily experience, that every truth, every truth that we have realized here concerning the body is valid and it operates, it works, it's active as every facet of your life, whether it's your business, whether it's your profession, whether it's your home, whether it's your social life, no matter what it is, it works in and out every facet, every aspect of your life. Why? Because your life, uh, your business, your home, uh, uh, profession, or whatever, is identically the same consciousness in action that is in action as the body, you see. So you can, you can uh, uh, I don't like to, well, not use or apply because you don't use your client, but you can realize 
You can perceive identically the same clues no matter what. Uh, and they seem to be a problem that pops up. Doesn't make any difference. Now, uh, suppose, uh, for instance, that you are a, a, a young man or a young woman uh, interested in a career. And our <coughs> many of our young people are very, very interested now in, um, in the ultimate. And I'll tell you, it just thrills me so much. Really, I'm so thrilled about it that I, I don't have any words to, to say how thrilled I am. Uh, and uh, uh, they are going to find that the, the principles. Now, for instance, we have realized that consciousness is indivisible. Here's an example. Well, now suppose uh, this young man or this young woman uh, a must of necessity, uh, what the world would call, contact an employer or something like that, you know. Uh, all right. Now, we have, in uh, uh, considering the body, we have realized the indivisible nature of all consciousness. We have realized uh, the, the oneness that is love of all consciousness, which is infinite consciousness, and we have realized that all consciousness is infinite or in infinity itself. All right, then, the supposed employer or whatever is identically the same consciousness as the, as the one who should uh, meet this employer, you might say, for the first time. All right, then the, the employer must of necessity, <coughs> must of necessity, be aware <coughs> of, this, uh, of this young man or young woman, even uh, if because <coughs> this young man or young woman has focalized his or her attention upon the necessity of, of, uh, of simply making what the world would call a contact there, you see. So uh, the very, uh, there's just one example of how this is. I take these, <coughs> these very same truths and, and realize them for uh, everyone, everyone. Every situation doesn't make any difference. You can see how this is, can't you? It's a, it's a wonderful thing to realize. But the reason, <coughs> the reason why I have dwelt <coughs> so very much with body is, as I, I have said before, because of this nuclear thing now. So, and it is, well, it seems to be my full sum of purpose at the moment, anyway. Now, <coughs> we were discussing this thing of, um, uh, of life itself and of our knowledge, of our perception that uh, that we cannot be alive unless we are life itself. <clears throat> now we can say, I know that this substance here is alive. Well, of course we know it's alive. It is conscious, it is intelligent, and it is loving. Every gentle act of pure affection is love, and it is love in action. Even if someone merely reaches out his or her hand and touches your hand, this is love. This is love in action. Even if someone only smiles at you with a light in his or her eyes, this is love. This is, this is love in action. We actually see love in action. We actually see life in action. We actually see consciousness in action. Every time we see something uh, light up with, a, uh, with a, this, what we call inner light of, of awareness of what everything is, of what the universe is, what he is, an awareness of you. Maybe as, as someone uh, comes into your experience or you come into someone's experience and they recognize you and the face like that, you see. Well, this is consciousness. This is loving consciousness. This is conscious love, you see. So we really see consciousness, we see love in action. All of this is not nearly so invisible as we have imagined it to be. And it's going to prove to be less invisible all the time. Yes, I know that this substance here is alive. It is conscious. It is intelligent. 
and it is loving above all never get away from that word love every gentle act of pure affection is love and when i really see when i really am seeing i do see the light this is you speaking i do see the light i do see the consciousness the intelligence the love that is right here and I know that I am seeing the evidence of absolute perfection, which is God. And what other, what else is there to see? Yes, I really do see the living, conscious, loving intelligence that is substance. This is God. This is substance. It is living substance. Well, it's alive. Of course, it's living substance. And you see that it is alive, so you see life. It is conscious substance. Behold, it is consciousness, and I see it. You do see it. It is all delineated right here. And I see it. This is the evidence of the absolute, eternal, constant perfection that you are. This is the evidence right here, right out in the open for anyone to see of the absolute, eternal perfection that you are. This is the body of light it's already showing up here tonight. This is the body of light, and you see it. I know you do. This is the evidence of things that have appeared to be unseen all the while here they were in full view. They just appeared to be unseen. This is the body that consists of the ever-living, ever-loving, ever-intelligent, ever-conscious wholeness, perfection, beauty that you are. That everyone is. And you see it all. Don't ever deny that you see it. You will deny yourself if you do. You will deny your very vision if you deny that you see it. So. You see it all delineated right here and right now. This is the evidence of the only body there is right here sitting in these chairs. This is the evidence of the only body right here and now. This is the changeless, uncreated body that has been new, 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 well, more times than possibly could be counted. More times than possibly could be counted since that supposedly baby body first appeared. This is not, as we said, this is not that baby body at all. On the contrary, that that, that appeared to be the baby body has been this whole ocean of living light, of life itself, of consciousness, of substance, of activity, has simply renewed itself, you see, as is so many, many times in all new that this is not at all the same substance that seemed to appear as that baby body. Now, I'm reminding you of this because it is, it is a good thing to consider, Father, as you go along. And is it not possible then that this body that has continuously been new and that is, uh, that is ever new, imperishable, indestructible, is there any reason why this very body cannot go on and on and on as long as we want it to? And who is it that does not want to live eternally? Anyone? Not that I know. 
not that I know. It's normal to want to live eternally because inherently we know that we are eternal life itself. It's normal to want to live, to be alive eternally. If it were not normal, our, our, our physicians, our doctors, would not try to keep us alive just as long as they could. They know it's normal, actually. They do the very best they can to try to keep people alive as long as they can. Because they know that death is not, death is not normal. Life is the normal thing. Death is a hoax. I don't know, I feel it so keenly. I feel the absolute necessity for us to begin, at least, to see the manifestation of this truth. Uh, the, I mean the necessity now. Now this is omnipotent, omnipresent in form. This, that sits right here. If you could see yourself as I'm seeing you right now, you would know that you cannot, couldn't possibly be anything other than omnipotent, omnipresence right here and right now. Eternal, infinite, omnipotent all-powerful, all-present, right here, right now. This is absolute perfection, focalized, concretized, right here. And don't forget that word concrete. Do you remember? Absolute perfection. All right. Concretized, right here. It is the universal ocean of conscious, living light, irresistibly, irrepressibly, evidencing itself right here, right now. This is the fact. This is the genuine and only evidence, and you are that evidence. You are that evidence. Every one of you. You are that. Uh, you are the evidence that you imagined you were seeking. All the while, we, we were, we've been. Here we've been seeking and seeking and seeking. And all the while we've been the whole thing and even the evidence of the whole thing. And we've been seeking the evidence and here we've been it all the while. And we are it. We're never going to deny being the evidence again. Or say, well, I'd like to see the evidence of this. We can't help but see it. We are it. We are it. Every iota of it, of us, is the evidence itself. All the while, all the while you were seeking, the evidence was right here. For the I that I am was here. And you were it. And you are it. The I that I am is here. The I that I am will everlastingly be here. Thus, the evidence is eternal. The evidence is omnipresent. And the evidence is constant. It's the evidence of infinity, of eternal infinitude. Now, I see the next subject here is the future is now. Oh, incidentally, uh, uh, somehow or other, our so-called young people are on my mind tonight. Well, they are generally, but then I, uh, I'm more uh, conscious uh, of it tonight, somehow or other. Uh, so many times they'll say, well, uh, I am... Um, I'd like to know what my future is to be, or prepare for it, or, and particularly in view of the war in Vietnam, which many of them, of these boys, feel is going to be quite an interruption, you know, in their lives. Uh, I feel well to, uh, to perceive 
that they don't have, they're not waiting for a future to come into their experience. There really is no time. This is true. That which is called the future. But nothing ever begins to take place, you see. Nothing ever begins to happen. Everything is always happening. And, and, if, uh, and if these boys and girls can realize that they're not, they're not uh, awaiting and wondering about a future, that already the future is. That which we call the future is here. And you don't have to wait for it. You don't have to wait for it. And neither uh, does your experience, uh, your, your uh, so-called activity, have to be interrupted. Because no matter where you are, you remain the same, identically the same one. And uh, nothing can change that. So uh, uh, it would be, be well to realize, well, I don't have to wait for a future in order to be successful. I don't have to wait for a future time uh, for, uh, my, uh, for the satisfaction of being uh, a, a fulfillment of purpose or my fulfillment of purpose at the moment. Because right now, the future, all the future is ever going to be, it is this moment. All the past ever was, it is this moment. Now, so, now for that which must now be said, I shall have to use the words in common, in common usage, in the world of a parent. <laughs> you know, as I said the other day, trouble with talking like a human being is you get misunderstood. <laughs> but I don't know, you, you simply have to have words, so you just, you just simply say them, that's all. <clears throat> yes, I, I shall have to use the words in common usage in the world of appearance. Now, this does not mean back into duality. I think you know me better than that by now. But sometimes, in order to bring out a fact or truth, such words are necessary. Now, I, I have confidence that, uh, that you will understand. Now, 100 years ago, a flight to the moon would have been considered to be impossible, as we know. 500 years ago, it would have been considered to be insane to even suggest such a thing, wouldn't it? 100 years from now, in a supposed future, the present modus operandi of reaching the moon will be considered to be very, very primitive indeed. This is true. This is absolute truth. And 500 years hence, it will be known that man does not even have to travel in order to be on the moon. Now, how about that? That's fact. Or on Mars or anywhere, matters not. And that's what these boys have, have uh, that's the, uh, as we said this morning, the spiritual significance of these boys' marvelous feet. I just love them, you know, I do. Uh, their marvelous feet is the, the absolute uh, uh, evidence that we are not confined to earth, and even though we do, and uh, we must use technical knowledge at the, at the moment, uh, uh, or if they seem to feel that it's necessary. But you know that technical knowledge itself did not fail. Why? Because it is intelligence. Because it's mind operating at this particular focal point. That's why couldn't fail. Couldn't fail. That's what we were knowing. That's what we were seeing. That's even where we were being in this. No, <laughs> I, I'm, I, you know, I'm still so thrilled about that whole experience. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> really, I did. Even if it did keep me busy.
I'll see where we read. 500 years from now, it will be known that man does not even have to travel in order to be on the moon, on Mars, or anywhere, anywhere at all. You realize that, don't you? And you know why. That's the important thing. You know why. Of course, we know there really is no time, and I'm talking as though time was a, uh, of a will of a lot of importance, uh, but it isn't. These are just words. Now, the consciousness that is conscious as man, now that's uh, capital M, does not begin nor end. It does not decrease nor can it increase. It can never become another consciousness than the one all full, complete consciousness, which is infinitude being conscious. Infinitude being conscious. And it is focalized right here, right now. Therefore, that which man is to know, man already knows this very moment. Let's say it again. That which man is to know, man already knows. Now that's for our young people too. We don't have to learn it. Whatever we're going to know, we know. Why? We, because we are not only infinitude itself, we are eternality itself right here, right now, not in the future, not in the past, here now. All we're ever going to be, we are now. All we're ever going to know, we know. Why? Because we are infinite mind, complete mind, complete consciousness. All the knowledge there is, we have now. Let's not limit ourselves. And why do we wait in order to know? We don't. We don't have to wait in order to know. And if we can just cast off these shackles that we've been uh, accepting, these uh, uh, shackles of limitation, well, uh, if I, uh, I'll, um, someday I'll know. You, you heard it. Someday I'll know. Life's fun. You're never going to know any more than you know right now. I said that to my husband one day. He has a tremendous sense of humor. And he said, well, then I guess I'm never going to know very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he really sets me back. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> No, it can never become another consciousness than the one all full complete. You see, this is the completeness. It's complete knowledge. And in order to be complete, and we are complete, we've got to be all the knowledge there is, has ever been, or will ever be. Otherwise, we're going to be incomplete. And we are not incomplete. And this is no ego, because we're not, no one... Uh, 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 I would say single one of us is claiming this to the, uh, uh, you know, just as that particular one. All of us, every one of us. The only difference is that uh, some of us are, are beginning to perceive it. Some of us are beginning to, to realize it. And at any moment, uh, now I don't mean that your, your attention is focalized on all the knowledge uh, all the, the universal knowledge there is at any moment, but I'll tell you, here's where that word consciousness comes in right now. At any moment that, we, that it is necessary for fulfillment of purpose for us to know any specific fact, doesn't make what it is, any difference what it is, for any knowledge that we should have at any specific moment, because we are conscious and consciousness is now, we know it and we know it now. It's right here. It's here as the intelligence that we are. It's here as the consciousness that we are. The intelligence is the consciousness. The consciousness, consciousness is conscious now. It doesn't take time, time for consciousness to be conscious. You see? That's why. Surely we do not focalize. Uh, we, we couldn't possibly on all the knowledge there is, the universal knowledge. But at any moment that we know a specific fact, because we are conscious, we are conscious of knowing, that particular fact. Now, is that helpful? Yeah, yeah. Good. 
<clears throat> that word consciousness is very, very important. Very. Uh, because it's the immediacy of everything, you see. You can't, you can't imagine time in connection with consciousness, you see. Uh, I had this experience with a, a young man who was taking a, a test uh, that it was, seemed to be quite, well, it seemed to be a crucial test for him. And uh, he was pretty worried about it. And bless his heart, he had limited himself. He felt that he'd been, he was slow, you know, in learning. He had to study awfully hard and that kind of thing. And so he came over and we had quite a talk. And uh, he went back in the uh, full awareness, full awareness uh, that he couldn't possibly be uh, just partially conscious. And if he was wholly conscious, he was wholly intelligent. And if he was wholly intelligent and wholly conscious, and conscious of being all the intelligence there is, he didn't have to worry because he was every fact that he needed to know and was conscious of being every fact that he needed to know. And it came right through at the top of the thing. No trouble at all, you see. That's, that's, that's the thing. <clears throat> Nonetheless, even though I've spoken as I have, and it, I, I've spoken truth, these are truths. Uh, let us say that 500 years from now, man will know and know that he knows. 500 years from now is now. Two. We'll know that the body and all substance in form is eternal and is immutable. He will be aware of the fact <clears throat> that all substance in form consists entirely of consciousness, completely of consciousness, and that consciousness is intelligence. Conscious intelligence is life itself. Call it energy, I don't care what you call it. Still, it's life itself. And none of it could exist unless it were love. Because without love, the universe itself would be shattered. Shattered. And he will know that consciousness can never become imperfect. Consciousness can never change. Consciousness can never age or deteriorate. And above all, Consciousness can never disappear or die because consciousness is eternal life itself. Consciousness is forever complete. That's what we were just talking about. And always it remains the same. Therefore, that which man will know, supposedly 500 years hence, he really knows now. That just what we've been discussing, you see. If this were not true, man would be in complete consciousness right now. Well, now you know very good and well you're completely conscious. You're not half unconscious or partially conscious. You're completely conscious. Well, how are you going to be completely conscious unless you are complete consciousness? Can't be done. Try it can't be done. It has been said that some particular man was ahead of his time, and a thing is impossible, and such a thing is impossible, for there simply is no time. You see, because all events are, are going on constantly, all true events, all actual events are a constant uh, uh, activity. Uh, there isn't any way in which to measure a so-called time between events. That's the only way we could have time, you see, would be if we had to uh, measure uh, uh, um, periods between events. Well, how are you going to measure period between events when everything is going on uh, all of the while? Everything, everything is going on all of the while, constantly, same as 
Uh, the only way in which space could be measured, in a count, you know, what they call space, would be the distance between objects. Well, when there isn't any separation, when there isn't any division, how in the world are we going to measure a distance between objects? We, it can't be done. So there is neither space nor time. There is simply infinity, there is eternity, and they are the same thing. Uh, even as you know now, they are, they are measuring, uh, uh, they seem to feel, they're measuring space by time, so many like years, that kind of thing, don't you know? Wait till they measure time by space. Man is complete as consciousness, this moment, even as he will be and is complete consciousness, 1,000 years hence, 1,000 years, like that. It's here. It's here. It's not coming. It's not something that's coming. It's here. Can you see this? Or can you see the possibility of it? Well, then you can see it. It's the same thing. Anything that's possible already is. You can see that. Now, since we are to be aware of being absolute perfection 500 years hence, we are aware of being complete absolute perfection this very moment. Because we're never going to become aware of anything that we're not aware of right now. As I said, we are completely conscious. So we are complete conscious mass, really. Thus, since we are to be aware of being the evidence of complete absolute perfection 500 years from now, we are the evidence of absolute complete perfection right now. All the evidence we're going to be, we are. All the evidence we've ever been, we are. What are we waiting for? Not a thing. Not a thing. You know, when in uh, illumination, you are aware not only of infinity, about a being infinity itself. You are also aware of eternity. You are aware of being eternity itself. And then you realize that infinity is the light. Infinity and eternity are the same thing. And you are that. You are complete as that. Now you realize how impossible it would be for anyone to be ever be any more or any less all that he is. Then you realize it, you see. Those of you who experience this right along uh, know this. We are not made of a substance that can become imperfect or wear out, not truly. Really. This substance right here is durable. It's durable. In fact, it is an ever-enduring substance. I like that, don't you? It is an ever-enduring substance. We are made or consist of the substance that is eternity. Yes, we do consist of the substance that is eternity, that is eternal life. We consist of the substance that is our eternal consciousness of being, our eternal awareness that we exist, our very awareness that we exist is eternal. <coughs> We're not made of a substance that is temporary or mutable. 
We do not consist of a substance that can evidence itself as imperfection. How could we? we? If we did, we would of necessity be temporary, for imperfection would always have to lead to extinction, wouldn't it, ultimately? We're never going to be extinct. We're never going to be extinct. No, we are not made of a substance that is temporary or mutable. We do not consist of a substance that can evidence itself as imperfection, as incompleteness, uh, that can deteriorate. Where would consciousness go if it disappeared? How can consciousness deteriorate? How can life deteriorate? How can intelligence, love, deteriorate? What is there about it to deteriorate? How can it disappear? Consider these things. Neither can the substance that we are die, nor can it perish, nor can it be destroyed nor can it be destroyed. We are the substance that evidences itself. Oh, we don't evidence it, you know. This substance evidences itself. Incidentally, I keep having a feeling, I, I think I better mention it right now, and this thing of body, uh, there, there is a mistaken, a misconception sometimes uh, that comes in here, uh, that this uh, ever-moving, circling, uh, boundless light, universal light uh, that reaches here, that, that the body is here as something like something static here, you see, and that this reaches here and circulates inside the body and then goes on. Well, that isn't the way it is, not at all. But you see, uh, this, this is a constant, this um, light, this, li this living consciousness, that is constantly reaching here, is the very substance itself. It forms itself. It's constantly forming itself and reforming itself, you see. It is, it isn't, uh, there's nothing here that's oh. static at all. Nothing here that just stays here and lets everything flow through it. That isn't the way it is. Do you, do you see that? Yeah. Let's see. That's the activity of the thing. If there were no activity, there wouldn't be anything. Oh. It's all activity, really. Truly, it is all activity when you come to the fundamental of it, but we won't go any farther into that right now. It happens to be the case. But uh, with the, uh, if this were just a static thing, well, after a while it would wear out or pass out or some crazy thing, you know. So, but it isn't. So, but it is necessary to know that the, that the essence that, uh, that reaches, that is constantly reaching here, uh, is, is the essence that that is the activity that is constantly forming and reforming this, this body, you see. It, this is what keeps the whole thing new all of the time. We are the substance that evidences itself as constant. Evidences itself now constant, ageless, changeless, absolute, complete perfection, and nothing else. We cannot be the evidence of anything that we are not. We have to be the evidence of what we are. A thing has to exist before it can be evidence, in order, rather, to be evidence. We cannot be the evidence of anything that we are not, and are not aware of being. Our very awareness of being is its own evidence of its existence, and is its existence as just what it is, and as nothing else. Now the doctors have repeatedly stated that they could not, they could see no reason why the body should age or die. Well, actually, there is no reason. There is no reason why the body should age why it should deteriorate, why it should die. And the only reason 
why it seems to go through this process of change is that man has been, as we said this morning, someone piped up with it, and I thought it was wonderful, brainwashed. Man has been brainwashed throughout the ages. That's the only reason. I wonder who was the first one that said everybody has to die. Wouldn't you like to meet them? <laughs> I mean, I'd be in a dark alley someplace. <laughs> no. He has been thoroughly convinced that he had to change, he had to age, he had to die. But let man just once realize that this cruel deception is false, completely false, and that he cannot die. No matter what happens, he cannot die. Because eternal life cannot die. By its very nature, it is eternal. It's impossible. And that his body remains eternally, constantly perfect and immutable. Then man will no longer even seem to become imperfect, no longer will his body even seem to be temporary, even seem to be temporary. And man will realize that his body is eternal, indestructible. There will come a day when everyone, absolutely everyone, will realize that not even one body, no matter what may seem to have happened, not even one body ever has been injured or destroyed. Not one. It's a good thing to realize during this time of, of war, of all where it seems that our boys are at war, they, their bodies do not consist of the kind of material that can be injured or that can be destroyed. That which seems to be invisible, but really is not, is the body of every boy over there, every boy that's been any in any of these wars, every boy that's ever seemed to go through these things. The body has never been touched. If I didn't know that, it would break my heart. But I know not one of these boys, the body has not been touched. The body is its own immunity to all injury, to anything that could possibly even seem to happen to a misconception of body. That's all. You know, these boys are on my mind quite a lot, these boys that are over there. They have been. Same thing with two in, in Korea, uh, and still is to some extent. You know, when you're uh, quite aware of uh, being so generally scattered around everywhere, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you're, conscious, you're quite conscious of what's going on over there over the world, you know, very, very conscious of it. Not one body has perished, not one body has ever died, not one. Never in all the kingdom of eternity has there existed a body that could perish, or that could be destroyed, or that could die, not one. Why, God is the body. And the body, there, the Bible says there is one body, one spirit, one body, one kind of body consists of God. God is the body. Spirit, consciousness. There is one consciousness of body, and this is the consciousness that is the body. Can consciousness be destroyed or injured? 
Can consciousness be killed? No. This is the body. And it is this indestructible body, this imperishable body, that I'm seeing sitting right here. God the eternal could never perish. God the eternal could never change, never be destroyed, never die. Life, by its very nature, has to live, has to be alive in order to be life, in order to be life, because all life is eternal. It has to remain eternally alive, and life, God, is the substance that is the only body of anyone or anything. Now, if we did not know this to be true, we could not stand the daily reports of injury and death of our boys. But we, we couldn't stand it. It would break us up. I know it used to do that to me before I actually knew truly. Ever-living consciousness is the only substance there is, and this is the only substance that really can be evidence. There can be no birth date for conscious life or ever-living consciousness, neither can there be a death date for conscious eternal life, thus there is no interim call time between an assumed birth and an assumed death. An assumed birth, an assumed death. Consciousness is not an awareness of having been conceived and born, neither is consciousness an awareness of dying. Consciousness is, is, is never aware of dying, or of a dying process. There's another point. Consciousness is never aware of having died. Consciousness is never aware of an accident, of an injury. Consciousness remains constantly, eternally aware of being and remaining intact, uninvaded, completely immune to any so-called injury or of imperfection of any kind at all. This is what you are. This is what every one of these boys really is, are, whatever we want to call it. Now, what consciousness are we speaking about? There is but one, and we are speaking of the ever-alive consciousness that is now alive as everyone that ever has been visible. Everyone that ever has been visible is visible right now when you truly see when you see, not with 2020 vision, but when you truly see things as they are, everyone that's ever been visible is still visible. <laughs>